Let's build the circuit and use it to measure voltage or potential difference across and current strength through. So we need a cell. We are going to use a 1,5 volt cell and we'll use a cell holder to help us. And just to make things a little easier, let's tighten the cell holder into that spot in the circuit board. It's not necessary, but it just makes it easier for us. Then we need a bulb. Here we have a bulb, and we're going to use a bulb holder. We screw the bulb into the bulb holder. And again, it isn't necessary, but let's make one of these screws on the circuit board hold the bulb holder in place for us, just so that things don't move around. Then, of course, we need connecting wires, connecting one terminal of the cell to one side of the bulb and the other terminal of the cell to the other side of the bulb. And so I'm going to use these crocodile clip wires and I'm going to connect the red one to the positive terminal of the cell and then to one connection on the bulb. I could connect it to that screw, but I'm just going straight to the bulb, the bulb holder rather. And then I connect the negative terminal of the cell to the other side of the bulb holder, and we can see that the bulb shines. Now any circuit involving a bulb has a very high current strength flowing through it, and that can make the battery flat very quickly. So it's a good idea to disconnect the circuit as quickly as possible. Just see what you want to see and then disconnect it if you are using a circuit involving a bulb. So now we've built the circuit. The next step is to do some measurements with the circuit and for that we use a multimeter. A multimeter can measure voltage, current strength and resistance and even some other things. Let's start off with voltage or potential difference. If we want to measure the potential difference or voltage across a component of our circuit, we need to make this multimeter into a voltmeter. We can see this V has a straight line next to it, referring to direct current, DC. And we turn it to the 20 reading over there. That means that we're going to read between 2,000 millivolts and 20 volts. In our circuit, we're using a 1,5 volt cell, so we definitely will not measure anything higher than 20 volts. So that's the correct setting to use. Notice how the wires are connected here, placed into the two bottom holes of the voltmeter, the red one in the middle hole, the black one in the bottom hole, and then this top hole, which is only for reading high current strengths, we just leave empty. We must be careful to connect the voltmeter in parallel. So we're going to place it across components. So we place the voltmeter across the cell or across the bulb, like that. That's what in parallel means. We just need to make sure we have a nice clear connection. There we get 1,52 volts let's say and here we get we should get exactly the same and we also get 1,52 volts. Now we want to measure the current strength through the circuit. For that we need to use an ammeter. So we need to place our dial here on the A. Now you can see there are quite a few different settings on the A on the ammeter range. Which one should we use? This setting would be if we were to be measuring in the microampere range. Those are very, very small currents. And then here we have milliampere, another milliampere, just two different settings within the milliampere range. And then this 10 stands for the ampere range. Now we're definitely not going to measure such low current strengths as fall into the microampere range. We're probably going to measure in the milliampere range. So we place our dial pointing first of all to 20 milliamperes and if we don't get a good reading we push it down to 200 milliamperes. Now it's very important to always be sure that when you use an ammeter it has to be connected in series. Otherwise, you will fuse the ammeter. And the reason for that is that an ideal ammeter has zero ohms resistance. If you were to connect 
the ammeter in parallel across the bulb if the circuit was complete or across the cell whether the circuit is complete or not then you will fuse this ammeter so you must be sure that you are connecting the ammeter in series. How can you make sure that you really are connecting an ammeter in series? The first step to do is you must break the circuit because that creates a gap and the ammeter will go into the gap. Once you've broken the circuit like that, then you place the ammeter in that gap. The red probe is connected to the positive side of the connection. So you can see this connection is closest to the positive side. The black connection, in this case, is connected to the negative terminal of the cell. And then we see that we get a reading of one. Now it's not really one. You can see that space and then the decimal. What that is telling us is that this setting is not right. We need to push it down to a different setting, also within the milliampere range, and there we get a nice reading and also the bulb shines again because this is completing the circuit. The current is flowing through the bulb and then through the ammeter. The ammeter has zero ohm resistance, if it's ideal, and so it is not affecting the circuit, at least it shouldn't be. We can see the value here is changing and that is quite to be expected, so don't worry about that. So it's quite difficult to decide what to take as the reading. Let's say 117,8. 117,8. Now, what's the unit? We are using this as an ammeter and we are using it in the milliampere range. So, this reading of 117,8 has the unit milliampere. If we want to convert that into amperes, we simply multiply by 10 to the power minus 3 because that's what milli means.